In this series of videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what you learned in an introductory micro class about graphing supply and demand and calculating consumer and producer surplus and deadweight loss, and we're going to kick it up a notch. So these are some of the typical things you're going to learn in an intermediate microeconomics class. So I'm calling this intermediate welfare analysis. Welfare analysis, one facet of welfare analysis at least, is, is uh, calculating consumer and producer surplus and seeing how people are impacted, how is their welfare impacted uh, whenever there are things like price floors and ceilings, etc. Now, I'm not going to explain the basics of what's going on here. A prerequisite is either you understand this from a previous class, if you have any uncertainties, uh, go to www.berkeyacademy.com and watch my section there called Intro, Intro Micro 4. It's about uh, 12 or 13 short videos there. Uh, or my YouTube playlist is the same content, Economics Graphing CSPS. So go see those if, if you get stuck on any of these. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to take this demand curve here, which can be represented by either of these first two equations. And this blue supply curve here, uh, which can be represented by either of these two equations for the supply curve. And we're going to look at the impact of a price ceiling of $10. So I'll assume that we've already looked at the equilibrium price of 16 and the quantity of 12, and we've calculated all these things. Total revenue of $192, consumer surplus of 144, total benefit of $336, which is the total area under the demand curve here. It's the total amount, the highest amount people would be willing to, wait, to uh, pay to get 12 units. It's the maximum willingness to pay. Producer surplus of 72 in this case, and variable costs of 120 if we are at equilibrium. Now the total surplus, the total of the consumer and producer surplus is 216, and that's this large triangle here bound by the uh, supply and the demand curves here. Now let's calculate uh, real quickly, you pause the video and do this, and so will I, the standard calculations for an introductory microeconomics course, the best case scenario. And then I'm going to show you how that might not be the best estimate of what might happen and we'll calculate the worst case scenario or the least efficient solution that would be possible. Now um, I'm going to draw these uh, shapes here real quickly and in case you just need a very quick review of what's going on. Let's see with this price ceiling here we're going to have um, this as the consumer surplus right here and so let's see we'll leave that as purple the producer surplus below the price and above the supply curve here all right and we will uh, convert that into yellow and then the variable cost will be the area under the supply curve. So let me shade that real quickly and then we'll pause the video and calculate what these are. All right, we'll call that pink. So pause the video, calculate all these numbers and then we'll come back and we'll look at the worst case scenario. Okay, so after calculating all of these, I get uh, the, the price, of course, will be 10 with the price ceiling, and the quantity will be 6 units. Total revenue of $60 down here, which we divide into producer surplus, the yellow, 18, variable costs of 42. And what's kind of interesting, I just chose, chose this price ceiling and these equations at random, but the consumer surplus is actually the same between these two. I like that because it's very clear to see uh, where the deadweight loss comes from, it comes from the fact that you know this price ceiling keeps consumers the same, you know, just as happy as they were before with the consumer surplus, but the producer surplus goes way down from 72 down to 18. So that deadweight loss triangle, we could. Um, calculate the area of that triangle right there. It's just how much the total surplus went down, 216 down to 162. 
Now this is the best case scenario. Now why is this so good that we call this the best case scenario? Well, the reason is with a price ceiling, the there are going to be 15 units that is that are demanded, uh, but only six supplied. And in this best case scenario, what's so good about it is we assume that the people who get those six units are the ones who have the highest value for those units. So the demand curve, remember, this red demand curve tells us the marginal benefit or how much people value the first unit, second unit, third unit, fourth unit, fifth unit, and sixth unit. And this consumer surplus being so large here, what we're assuming is that this is either one consumer who says, okay, I'm only buying six units and these are how much I value these first six units to get this total benefit of 204. But this might not be the case. What might be going on here is that these are individual people who buy one unit at a time, perhaps a car or something like this. And if there is a price ceiling of 10, we don't know that it's going to be these first six people with the highest value that are going to be getting those six units. It could be, you know, whenever you, you have a shortage, you have to figure out how you're going to allocate these units to people. Ideally, the best case scenario, the people who value the product are the ones that are going to get it. The people who value it the most are going to get it. And that's what you assume basically in an introductory micro class. But that is not necessarily the case. Let's look at the worst case scenario. Suppose instead of these people, the first six who value the good the most are the ones who get it. Suppose the opposite is true. Suppose we start from back here at the, at the end, sort of, and we work backwards. So starting from this point right here, um, suppose um, the one of the people who gets one of these six units is this uh, person number 15 who only values that good at $10. So he sees, oh, this thing's $10. I value it $10. I'll buy it. He gets no consumer surplus at all. And suppose another person that gets this good is the 14th person here. The 14th person values it a little bit more than $10. He doesn't get much surplus, but he gets a little bit. But nowhere as much as, as you know these people would get over here. So basically how you would analyze this is to, say, is to assume, look, suppose the consumer surplus people get is not this huge purple thing, but we assume it's as small as it could possibly be. So that would mean that the people who get the product are the least willing to pay six people who are willing to pay still over $10. So we start at the 15th person and we work back six until we get to the ninth person here, the, the ninth least um, appreciative person here in our group. And let's, uh, let's color that uh, gray over here. Suppose instead that was the consumer surplus we got. What would happen to our total surplus now? And consequently, how much would our deadweight loss be? Well, it looks like the area of this gray triangle is going to be 1 half times the base of 6 from 9 to um, 15. And the height goes from 10 up to uh, 22 there. So if somehow the, the six units are allocated in the worst possible way and, and, the, and the people who value this good the, the least got the good, then the consumer surplus would be 1 half times 6 times, um, well, I'm going to have to change that font just a second. Okay, so that that worst case consumer surplus is only $36. So in the worst case, what would happen? Well, the the cost to produce these goods would still uh, be the same, and, and the total revenue would still be the same. The only thing changing is instead of this large purple consumer surplus going into this total surplus, now we only have $36 going into that total surplus.
So what's going to change is now our total surplus will only be the producer surplus of 18 plus this much smaller worst case scenario uh, consumer surplus and then our dead weight loss is consequently going to be much much higher. So that total surplus now in the worst case would be only $54 again the thirty six dollars worst case consumer surplus plus the eighteen and producer surplus and so if we compare the total surplus without any sort of uh, price ceiling or price floor or anything going on two sixteen compare that to the fifty four and our dead weight loss now could be as high as one sixty two so the dead weight loss would be equal to one sixty two that's the worst case scenario and this the 54 dead weight loss is the best case scenario now if you want to be realistic whenever you're trying to figure out what the outcome what the damage done of a price ceiling would be and you want to give a complete accounting what you should do is give both of these numbers say well at a minimum this price ceiling will create a dead weight loss of 54 at a maximum it could be as high as 162 and that would be the worst case scenario if these lowest valuing people are the ones who end up being in line right at the time uh, when they can get those six products that are available now I'm going to make some other videos where we look at the worst case scenarios uh, for a quota as well and we're going to look at some other other similar situations.